Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. On today's show we are discussing the recent rise in hate crimes and the impact that is having on individuals and communities living in Britain. Uh, I'm delighted to uh, welcome onto the second segment uh, Elaine Bagshaw who is a uh, Liberal Democrat uh, spokesperson for Limehouse. Uh, Abdul Salam, a, a writer who is still with us and uh, Sonia Akhtar who is a psychologist and will provide perspective uh, on how the recent incidents have affected people from a psychological perspective. So uh, thank you and welcome on the show. Elaine, I'll start with you. Um, do you think enough is being done to tackle uh, the issue of hate crimes that have arisen recently? And I don't think so. And I think this is, whilst there seems to have been another spate recently, um, this is something that we've been dealing with for over a year, particularly so in Tower Hamlets after the Brexit vote, there um, was an increase in hate crime and there was a lot of people in the community saying that they felt less safe, that the narrative around that referendum had made some groups of people feel that it was okay to start threatening people in the street. There are women being yelled at for wearing a hijab and um, there have been protests continuing at the East London Mosque and um, that's been going on for a long time. So whilst we're seeing um, an increase at the moment it's not uh, it's not something that we haven't been dealing with for a while and I think there's a long-term problem where we haven't tackled uh, the fact that the community still doesn't trust the authorities in order to report what's happening. Uh, we haven't tackled what leads to people having these views and feeling that they can behave in this way um, and I don't think we're giving enough support to people that have been victims of sure. hate crime as well. Okay, uh, Sonia, what's your kind of, uh, you know, what are you hearing uh, from people in the community? What are, how are people feeling, uh, you know, what's their inner feelings about what's going on? I think obviously because there's been a recent surge and influx in hate crimes um, and it's definitely made, I feel like it's ostracised our society a little bit, our community, sorry, a little bit. Um, and the feelings the generally that are going around is the feeling of anxiousness, worrisomeness, you know. Um, I think families, especially first generation. Um, my mum, I can, if I can give a personal experience, after the recent attack on Resham Khan and Jamil Mukhtar, who is his co her cousin, um, my mum was really, really scared. It was not too far away from us either. Um, and then she began, began looking into Facebook and different articles. And um, she began um, telling me, you know, when I used to go to work, for instance, and I used to go to social events later on, she'd be like calling me and saying, where are you? You know, mm. I'm, I'm getting a little bit worried. She's really scared about um, my journey from A to B. And in between, she thinks something might happen. Mm. Um, so genuinely around the community, there are feelings of anxiousness. Mm. and. And um, I guess as a result of fear-mongering, it's kind of impacted onto our society quite a bit. Okay, thank you. Um, Abdul Samad, uh, coming back to you, um, you know, people with the recent uh, incidents regarding, you know, acid crimes and uh, acid uh, attacks and so forth, you know, are we living in a time where we have to be careful about opening uh, uh, windows when we're driving? What's your view on that? Because there are um, a lot of people who are now feeling scared to actually drive around with their windows open. We are living in a, a, a very uh, dangerous time anyway. But I'd just like to clarify something that the, 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 the phenomenon of acid attacks is, 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 is being used by racists, is being used by in, 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 in these so-called hate crimes. But the phenomenon of acid is not solely restricted to hate crime. Uh, um, there is another uh, a part of society that is using acid uh, in attacks, in intimidation. Um, so we, we, we need to clarify that, that it's not just racists that are going around chucking acid at people. There is this criminal element as well. Um, and racists have other, many other ways of, 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 of you know, intimidating uh, Muslims, Bangladeshis, uh, anyone that's not white, sure. British, you know, uh, English, okay. Christian, etc. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, Elaine, coming back to you, um, why, why was there an increase um, after Brexit? I think it was a bit like letting a genie out of the bottle, mm -hmm. that referendum. A lot of the rhetoric um, around uh, the debate and particularly around immigration in that debate, um, a lot of people felt they, it was suddenly okay to say a lot of things that we hadn't accepted for a long time. Mm -hmm. So the example I always go to is Nigel Farage stood in front of the poster um, of people fleeing the conflict in Syria and um, very legitimately seeking refuge and that being used as a look there are all of these evil immigrants trying to break into our country um, and that 
kind of narrative in the discussion, I think once the Leave campaign won, a lot of people suddenly felt, oh, hang on a minute, I've got my country back, I can say whatever I like, and um, this is a vote against immigration and against people who aren't white churchgoers um, born, uh, born in the UK, and therefore um, I'm going to take it upon myself to go and, um, I guess, in some ways uh, cleanse what they felt was, uh, what they feel is their country, which to someone like me, having gr I grew up in Nottingham, mm. I now live in London, both very multicultural parts of the world. My parents specifically moved me into a city when I was younger so that I would grow up with other cultures. It's really depressing for someone like me because as far as I'm concerned, my country is all of the communities that are here living alongside each other and us all having shared um, experiences, but also things that make us different. Um, so it's been, it, yeah, it's disheartening over the last year to have seen that start breaking down sure okay and obviously um, we from a UK perspective I guess their their view is that obviously immigration they want to control and uh, you know how they've gone about here people might not be in agreement with it but I guess that that would be their argument that they want you know more people um, you know more opportunities for people locally and uh, they feel that threat um, coming from abroad yeah I guess um it's one of those things where it's talked about in that way, but I don't think for some people that's actually what it is. Um, I can understand in some ways people feeling that things are changing very quickly. So um, somewhere like uh, Skegness, where I used to go on holiday all the time as a kid, um, has changed very, very quickly. And that has made some people kind of sit back and go, oh, hang on a second, this is not the place that I recognise. Um, but you do have this underlying thread of people where it's I think it is far more linked to racism and linked to I want a particular type of person living in this country and anyone who falls outside of my definition of that I've got no time for um, and increasingly it seems over the last year that's turned into violence and intimidation. Thank you Elaine. Um, come back to you Sonia. Um, what you know, from a psychological perspective, you know, what motivates or, you know, what's the thinking behind a person who carries out such uh, atrocious attacks? <laughs> That's actually difficult for me to mm. say either because I'm not in that person's brain at the time. But I guess what Elaine says, certain factors kind of push people to come out um, and I guess essentially perform cowards act, cowardice acts. Um, with the Brexit stuff, and I, I guess with the Trump winning over as well, Trump regime, it's kind of empowered that society, you know, um, I guess in some way to go and attack, you know, vulnerable people essentially, Muslim women with hijab, um, et cetera, and et cetera. And I think for me, the worrying thing is how our community are dealing with it. And I think it's not going too great. You know, and I think we need to raise awareness as well. And with these things, you have mental health. Um, everyone has mental health. But with these events, and as a result of, of these events, you're, you're getting people, again, like I said, anxious, um, fear-mongering. Mm. Fear um, you're having families who are limiting their children to go out and perform. I had an example where um, a mother didn't want her child to go out far out into a, a university because she was scared, you know, she's like, stay local. And I think as a result of all of these things, um, you're kind of limiting your children. And we, sure. must, we mustn't do that. We mm. must work collectively. Okay, you know, thank you. Reduce. Thank you, Sonia. Uh, but Salam, um, coming back to you, um, obviously the, you know, with acid crimes, it's not, you know, it's not anything new, but I guess it's, it hasn't been as prominent in uh, in the media as uh, as it has recently um, you've 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 had experience of uh, working and trying to do research uh, of how acid attacks have uh, occurred or in Asia so please you know enlighten us in terms of what you found through okay your research. Um, about a year ago I, I decided I, I came across um, the phenomenon of acid attacks um, in in countries like Bangladesh India Sri Lanka Southeast Asia and I decided to go and explore it and investigate a little bit further because I just didn't want to be, I didn't want to just watch it on the television and I felt really helpless as well. So I, <clears throat> I went out to Dhaka, I, I went to the Acid Survivors Foundation 
uh, the only place in the entire country that treats acid victims. Um, for the record, 2002, um, Bangladesh had the highest level of acid attacks in the entire world. They, had, they were reporting around 1,200 attacks per year. Uh, this, because of government legislation, because of, of, of limit or, uh, of access to acids, this has been reduced. Also because of uh, social views. This has also been reduced. Now, currently, they've got about 80, 80 to 100 attacks per year. Um, this country... Is this with intent to cause harm? Yeah, this is intent to cause harm. It's, it's, a, it's very much a, a gender-based crime. So it is it, um, one in eight victims are men, but the other seven are women. So it is, it, often it is uh, rejection for, for marriage proposals, um, it is family feuds, it is uh, the, the husband and the wife arguing about something. The, the most traumatic stories I've heard um, and um, was one when the w husband gets angry or gets uh, frustrated or whatever it is throws the acid at the wife and the child gets in the way to protect their mother so I've got pictures I've got videos I mean I, I took footage I've, I've currently <coughs> it's taken me a while because I'm not an editor but I've edited the footage together finally and I've, 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 I've stuck it up in the in the on the internet if anyone wants to watch it mm. it's a uh, it's uh, acid survivors foundation in Dhaka just uh, mm. google my name Salam Jones and you'll find it um, you know uh, it's a uh, I, I think it's important to raise this issue uh, of of acid violence in countries like Bangladesh especially being a Bangladeshi mm. why do you th why does it not get enough uh, media attention in your opinion because it's not pretty I did two appeals last year and it's really, really, uh, it frustrates me to say this and it also kind of embarrasses me to say this. I did two simultaneous appeals last year. I do, I do a different public appeal every year for, to fundraise. Uh, last year I did two simultaneous appeals to, next, to, next to each other, parallel appeals. I raised £3,000 for the Acid Survivors Foundation in three months. I raised five grand in six weeks for the Street Kids project. Mm. People, when it comes to kids, cats and cancer, people will throw money at you. Do you, do you think now that, you know, in light of what's happened recently, because now people living, you know, in, in the UK, they're much more, you know, from the uh, Bangladeshi community, they're much yeah. more kind of aware of what's happening. Do you think that will help us try and tackle the issues in Bangladesh? Because it's given the I'm, light that it... The perspective yeah. that they need, yeah. And not Absolutely. a lot of people could relate to it. I'm, I, in a way, I'm hoping so. But at the same time, I must clarify that the, the phenomenon of acid attacks in, in Bangladesh, in countries like Bangladesh, and the, 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 the recent occurrences of acid attacks in, in this country are two very, very isolated uh, uh, to uh, topics. In Bangladesh, it's much more to do with honour and, and revenge and attack. And here, I'll give you a statistic. In 2000, uh, 2013, there were 166 reported acid attacks in the whole of the UK. 2016, there were 455 reported attacks or threats of attack using acid. Currently acid is being used not only for hate crimes, um, it's a very easy thing to just chuck acid into somebody's car or you know in, in mm. their face as they were walking past, but it's also being used as the weapon of choice by current gangs, gang members, teenagers, oh. teenagers who want to rob, who want to commit crime, um, and the reason for this is very simple. If you get caught with a knife, you get charged with attempted ma uh, murder. If you get caught with a bottle of acid, you get charged with attempted GBH. There's a huge difference in the criminal thingy. The only way for In your opinion, yeah. In your yeah. opinion, do you think there needs to be a tougher sanctions oh, on people? Oh, big time. The, 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 this, the, the, to throw acid at somebody's face, it, 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 it is equivalent to rape. It is equivalent to a, a terrorist attack. It is, you are invading somebody's private, the most sacred part of their body. You are invading that person's space. You are, inv you are violating that person's right um, in every way possible. Uh, you know, I think a lot of these teenagers who, who are committing these crimes at the moment, in, in, with these recent robberies and mopeds and whatnot, I think they underestimate the severity of, of the consequences of that action and how you can leave somebody scarred for life. What do you think needs to be done? Uh, tougher penalties on pe perpetrators of acid attacks, very simple. Um, treat it like gun crimes. So you, you've, you've gone out with a loaded weapon. Mm. It, it, as, it, as they say, it's not the gun that kills people, it's the, 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 the idiot holding the gun, sure. pointing it at someone that kills people. Should we be worried, uh, you know, based on what you've said to us, you know, that in Bangladesh this is very common? And if this is something that's now starting to take formation here, is there a worry that uh, people from the Bangladeshi community might start using that and retaliating. What's your, um, what's, what's your view on the, that? The, 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 again, because if you're saying it's very prominent in Bangladesh, you see the links that I'm trying to make here. It's on the decline in Bangladesh because okay. of the law, 
because of uh, social uh, attitudes towards acid attacks um, and because of, of awareness really. Uh, I think the same thing needs to be done here in this country, um, not just for, regarding hate crimes but generally crime, sure. criminal activities involving acid, uh, I think they should have tougher uh, penalties, they should restrict, I mean it's very easy to say thank restrict uh, the, uh, the sale of acid but hydrochloric acid you can buy at any plumbing yeah, merchant. Thank you, yeah. thank you for that. Uh, that's the, uh, we've run out of uh, time for the second segment, do stay with us when we will look at how to tackle this. Uh, phenomenon that's become hate crimes and uh, you know we'll be uh, listening to Elaine, Sonia and Majid on how to kind of track all this issue so do stay with us thank you <laughs>